fix that or prevent it. But the really, really bad part of this is that this moment right here, this guy is saying he's a leg rider. Oh, crap. All right? I'm about to get my arms ripped off. Not good. So they clam up, they block up, they start protecting themselves. You guys understand that? So if you're throwing one leg in, we're talking milliseconds. Now the other leg's coming in. He's clamming up. He's going to grab a hold of it. Okay? Get in a lot of trouble. All right? Somehow they grab it. And a lot of guys, um, even my guys on defense, not as worried about getting out of legs as they are about breaking your, your leg off at the knee. You know? <laughs> I mean, if it's going to be a fist fight in the phone booth, we're up for it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's, when that other leg comes in, that's kind of where it starts. All right, so you got to understand that. So that's the bad side. But the good side of having both legs in is when you get them broken down. Okay? They ain't going nowhere. Okay? So when you have both legs in, we're gonna start with the power half or whatever. Uh, it's not really parallel. You're off to one side just a little bit because you want that leverage for a power half. You ever understand that? Okay? So you don't want to be completely equal. Again, if you have insanely long legs, nobody really here is built like that. Uh, but coaches, if you coach someone with just way tall, okay, they can throw both legs in all the way around the calves and, and still be in good position to have leverage. But most of us, okay, one leg is going to be ankle deep, the other leg is going to be laces deep. All right, everybody understand that, okay? And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to get in good position. Now, if I'm on top and I'm trying to chop or claw or half Nelson or anything, which way do I want to move him when I'm on top? Where do I want weight? Do I want weight forward or back? Forward. I want weight forward. I want to break him down forward, right? Most of the time. Most people don't pull him on top of it, right? So why then, when a lot of people throw legs in, do they scoot their hips all the way back? Because everybody's screaming, don't get high, right? Don't get high. So I'm all the way back. There's no pressure. There's zero weight forward. you got to take a little risk here. Okay? You're not out of position right here. Your hips are in good position. Now, this may sound high, and you do get yourself in trouble if you, you know, high. Okay? But if you got your chin on a tabletop, okay, your hips are in, you're good here. You're all right. Now get a hold of something. Double underhooks, power half, something right here. But I've got hips. My hips are on his shoulder. There's a whole lot more weight here. I'm pushing him forward. Now, once my hips are up on his shoulder, I'm all right. Bad is when your hips go over the shoulders. Hips over the shoulders, the rule there, you bail right away. Bail. Get out. Why? Oh yeah, I'm good at neutral, I'm alright with that. Okay? But if your hips are back, you're good. Okay? So you're right here. Now what you want to do is you want to go into your power half or double unders. Don't reach, because your head goes down. Keep your chin up. Now drive your legs back up and out. You're right here, back up and out. And you want to be able to land without falling to the side and keep his legs in the air. I like to toe the mat. Some people can turk their legs up, lightweights, youth wrestlers can just point their toes up. All right, older, bigger guys, if you just toe the mat with both toes, hips in, keeps those toes in the air. I've, I've got really good pressure here. Okay? Really good at work. All right? So, get one leg in, ankle deep. Get one leg in, laces deep. Get underneath, get your hips up a little bit. Drive into them with your hips. Really arch, really turk, or, or sprawl. It's almost like a sprawl. Drive them forward and break them down without falling over. Got it? One, two, three.